Welcome to the first episode of Learning from Pre-Modern Plagues, a video series produced by the Center for Renaissance Studies at the Newberry Library. I'm Christopher Fletcher, the Program Manager for Outreach in the Center, and I'm pleased to share with you the first episode of the series entitled The Perils of Reopening, The Plague in Marseille, 588 CE. Our story begins with a particular witness. This is a late seventh century manuscript of the Historia Francorum, the history of the Franks, written by St. Gregory of Tours, a bishop in the late sixth century in the same place. Gregory wrote this history to tell the stories of his own people, the political events of his day, the acts of God, and generally stuff that Gregory felt people should know about going forward. Among the stories he decided to include in a manuscript like this was a story of an outbreak of plague in the, sixth, in the late sixth century in the French city of Marseille. The plague in question was the plague of Justinian, one of the most devastating plagues in the late antique period. Its first outbreak was in the 540s under the reign of the emperor Justinian for whom the plague was named. It was caused by the same bacterium that would later cause the Black Death in the 14th century. This is the earliest documented appearance of this plague. And it had several recurrences until the middle of the 8th century. It was, however, particularly devastating in the Byzantine Empire and the city of Constantinople. We have sources reporting 10,000 deaths per day in the city, no place to bury the dead, leaving the entire city smelling of death, and also complete devastation in the countryside, which not only lost the food supplies, but dramatically inflated grain prices for those who remained. Now, some of these reports are almost certainly exaggerations but exaggerations to give a sense of the incredible suffering, shock, and horror that this epidemic caused. We can see a sense of that in this late 15th century altarpiece painting, which shows St. Sebastian interceding for those stricken by the plague. We get a sense of the incredible anguish uh, and, and, and suffering that this plague could have caused in a city like Constantinople. And this occurred also in the other subsequent outbreaks of the plague. Gregory tells us about one of them, which hit here, the French city of Marseille on the Mediterranean coast, shown here in a 16th century illustration. The city, as you can see, was an important port uh, and had been since the Roman times. It also made it a city that was particularly susceptible to epidemics and pandemics, which is exactly what happened in the sixth century, according to Gregory. Gregory reports that the plague first came to Marseille in the expected way, on a ship from Spain, carrying what Gregory called the usual kind of cargo. Now Gregory, or at least his source, were correct that it was the ships that brought the plague to the city, though they were incorrect in thinking that it was just simply cargo that had somehow been brought. What was really causing the plague, as it would be for the later Black Death, was fleas carried by rats, which were a very common occurrence in a port city like Marseille. As a result, uh, Gregory reports that the infection did not spread through the residential court immediately. Some time passed, and then, as he says, like a cornfield set alight, the entire town was suddenly ablaze with pestilence. Faced with this, the residents of the city turned to the remedies that everyone knew about in the late 6th century. Prayer, fasting, various acts of penance, but also ceasing all social interaction, and, if you could afford it, escaping completely from the city itself. This is what many residents of the city did. And they believed that they were safe in the end. At the end of two months, as Gregory says, the plague burned itself out, and the population returned to Marseille, thinking themselves safe. However, as they did so, the residents still did not truly understand what was causing the plague, how it was spread, what they could do to stop it. As a result, they were in for some deadly consequences when they returned. As Gregory reports, all who had come back died. Now this too is almost certainly an exaggeration, but it does give us a sense of the immediate and terrible consequences when people return to a place that did not, that maybe seemed to be safe, but actually was not with the plague running under the surface. Gregory recorded this story so that people would understand about the suffering that had happened in Marseille in the late sixth century. And today the lesson for us is a key one, especially as so many places in the world think about trying to return to normal. The fact is just as true now as it was in the late 6th century, until we fully know what is happening with the plague, how to control it, how to treat it, how to stop its spread, how to even track its spread, we find ourselves liable to the same types of deadly consequences that the residents of the city of Marseille felt in the late 6th century. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Learning from Pre-Modern Plagues. Please stay tuned uh, for future episodes, which will be posted shortly. Until then, if you have any questions or comments, please send them to us at renaissance at Stay well.